Hello, my name is Ted Middlestad. My wife and I own a house out on the Oregon coast we vacation rent out. Today, I'm going to show you how I installed electric vehicle charging station in that house. For a rental owner, there are several issues that do not apply to a regular homeowner. I'm going to talk about these during the installation, but I'm going to start by going over the parts that I used for the installation. First, we'll start with an RV power outlet, the car charger itself. Both of these came from Home Depot, and the car charger is a portable charger. Then some electrical items that I'm going to be using for the installation, as well as a drill and a hanger for the cable itself. There's also a plywood backboard and an ohmmeter. The next issue that's important for a landlord, particularly one doing a vacation rental, is the amount of power that the renter is going to be allowed to use. I'm not too worried about the costs of the power because power is fairly inexpensive. I'm mainly worried about the amount of power that's going to be taken at any given time. High power devices draw a lot of current for a short time off of the building wiring. And most houses were not built with the idea that you would be running a 50 or 60 amp Tesla charger off of the house power. So that's why I have selected a 16 amp car charger. 16 amps at 240 volts is enough to charge a car overnight roughly around 100 miles. That should be plenty for a renter that comes and stays for the weekend or so forth. The other issue, as I've said, is the building uh, electrical being able to handle the load. Here is an electrical panel. Here is the electrical panel for my rental. As you can see, it's an older panel. It actually is a split bus panel. The power outlet we're going to be using is a split outlet that provides both 120 and 240 and it is a twist lock. I'll get to the why it's twist lock and why it's a split outlet in a few minutes. But let's take a look at the panel first. That outlet is being fed by a 30 amp breaker right there. A 16 amp draw off of a 30 amp breaker is pretty safe and I'm not worried about it overheating or causing a fire or anything like that. It will take longer of course than if we were to use a 50 amp breaker and a 50 amp cable but that's okay. The renter is going to be sleeping here who's going to be charging their car so they have plenty of time to recharge their car. The outlet itself that I'm using is a split outlet twist lock. And as I mentioned earlier, the reason we're using that outlet is because that outlet can be used for several other important things. One of these is what's called a power distribution unit. This one is a commercial one. As you can see, the electrical plug on it is designed to go into a 30 amp, 120, 240 volt outlet. That provides power on both sides of the bus. This power distribution unit is a homemade one. Same kind of thing. Power that's distributed from that is mainly 120 volts available for twist lock with a 240 volt twist lock. The reason that it's twist lock is so that I can have tools in the um, beach rental that I do not want renters messing with that are powered by motors and have sharp saw blades and things like that on them. And since all of those are on twist lock, when the renter is not here, this power distribution is locked up. So the renter cannot easily power any of these tools up and cut themselves or cause any other trouble. The other reason for going to a split outlet is that 
it is quite common to power recreational vehicles. So if I happen to be at the house and I have family that are visiting in an RV, they can park their RV in the driveway, plug it into the outlet there using an adapter, and get power to their RV. The last issue concerns the charging cable itself. Most charging cables that are level 2 or above in North America use commonly available dryer outlet plugs on them, as this one does. Obviously, you cannot plug a standard dryer plug into a twist lock. That is where this comes in. That, what this allows us to do is it allows us to plug the charging cable into the RV power outlet, then plug the RV power outlet through a cord into the wall. That way the renter can't walk off with the charging cable and the outlet is not dedicated for use with the charging cable either. It can be easily replaced. Or rather the cable can be easily replaced. And the outlet is available to power tools and other things like that. And because all of this is twist lock and other connectors that are not easy for a vacationer to come by, we're not going to have trouble with renters messing around with high voltage power outlets in the house. So let's unbox this RV outlet and see what we've got. Here's our 30 amp RV power outlet that is locking. As you can see, there's a lock here that fits right in there and you can just put a padlock on it. But the outlet itself is actually a 30 amp 120 volt outlet. That's not suitable for the charging cable. We're going to replace that outlet. The yeah, well, outlet we are using is a typical 30 amp dryer outlet that mates up with the charging cable. This was also purchased from Home Depot. So the first step in changing the outlet out is removing the back of the existing outlet with these screws. Here's the outlet plate. As you can see, it just simply screws onto the existing plate with a ground line. Now you can see the RV outlet removed from the backing plate and the new outlet next to it. Notice that the RV outlet uses larger screw holes than the new outlet. I foresaw that and brought some screws for the new outlet. The other thing is notice that we're going to mount the outlet upside down within the box. The reason for that is because the plug itself was put onto the charging cable upside down. The ground line actually should be on the bottom and the two blades should be on the top. But what can you expect, you know, it's Chinese guy, people making this stuff and they don't use any of these kinds of connectors in China. Here's the outlet installed in the plate before we put it back in. Don't use an excessive amount of force with the screws to tighten it down. That's the old outlet. I put it in the bag. This will go back in and we'll test the fit with this with the cord. Here's the outlet installed, the charging cable plugged in, and the cord out the bottom of the outlet box. That securely locks it into there so that nobody can take it away. Or Now that the fit is checked, we remove the outlet again. And the next step is adding the cord. We're going to figure out what strain relief we're going to use for the cord and knock that out. I have several strain reliefs that I use. The strain relief that you use is going to be dependent on the size of the cord. This cord is 10 slash 3 cord. We only need three conductors for the charger and it has to be number 10 to carry 30 amps safely. Now granted the charger is not going to use 30 amps but the breaker is sized at 30 amps so that's an important point when you're dealing with higher power stuff like this. If that cable, for example, 
uh, were to short or the electronics in the charger were to short or what have you, then the breaker would see the short and would be able to dump up to 30 amps into the cable. We don't want this heating up and catching on fire or anything having to do with this going back to the house. If the cable heats up and catches on fire that, because this has been sized too small, then that's not our problem. That's actually Electron's problem and they'll be the one that has to pay for replacing the house. Here I'm stripping the wire back. You want to make sure to get plenty of wire inside the box so that the outlet can be pulled out for servicing. Alrighty, so here we got the strain relief and into the box. And we got the cable just loosely fitted in there and that's how we're going to do that. And then we'll just strip the installation, insulation and put it on the outlet when we go to mount it. Next step is putting the plug on the end of the other end of the cable right there. Alrighty, so here we have the plug attached to the wire and that's the wiring pin out. You can see essentially the pin that is immediately to the left of the ground pin is the neutral and the two hots are on each side. Of course we're not going to trust that until we test it out and I'll show you how that's done. Now here's the plug all tightened down. Now the other thing I should probably mention when I was working with the plug is it's important to get a really high amount of torque on the screws that are securing the wires into the plug. Now here's how we're going to test the polarity of this. First thing we do is we go to that 30 amp breaker and we turn it off. Okay. Then we're going to take this with the wires like this and we're going to plug it into the wall. And then of course the last thing we do is we remove our pigtail plug and turn the power back on. And here's how I find the center line of a stud. I use a stud finder to get the approximate location and then I start driving a very small nail in a horizontal line where I think the stud is. When I hit the when I drive the nail into the area where there's no stud, there's no resistance after it penetrates the drywall. Where there is a stud, there is resistance when it penetrates the drywall. It's important to get these um, on a good center line on the stud. I'm going to be using these lag bolts to bolt the outlet onto the dry or onto the wall. And there's just going to be two of them. One will be in here, and one will be further down. Of course, there's no holes in there, so I'm going to drill um, holes through the steel, and then I'm going to drill a pilot hole into the stud for each of the bolts. Now we've got the box mounted on the side of the wall with our bolts. It's torqued down pretty tight. There's no way that somebody can just come along and tear the box off the wall. Okay, now we have the wiring done for the outlet. Strain release all tightened on. And it's just a matter of putting all this in and testing it out. Okay, the moment of truth now. Twist that in. Now it's just a matter of 
mounting the hanger and getting the getting the cord hung up. So instead of the stupid plastic anchors that came with the J bracket, I'm using some real ones. So this is the completed installation. As you can see, the cord and everything is kind of hanging down below. There's enough space for it to be put away. I went ahead and put the box the thing came in close by, just in case one of the renters with an EV wanted to know what they were plugging in. And uh, one thing, too, I'll emphasize one more time is importance that any connectors you make on high current applications are torqued down really tightly. For testing, it's important to do some testing on this as well, and probably the most important testing is charge a car with it, and after five, six hours, you want to feel the outlets, you know, feel anywhere that there's a junction on the side or what have you. And make sure you don't feel any warmth, because that could indicate a bad connection. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it.